Hey guys, what is up? Recording this video real quick on my birthday while I have some time to myself. I figured, you know what, let's make a video on something a little bit scary and get the facts out there and the facts straight about what's going on as far as like Gary's Mod, TF2, and a bunch of other games that have Nintendo content modded into them over the last 20 years. You know, well, some of these games are newer than 20 years, but whatever. You get my point. So, <clears throat> let's read this real quick. This is an official post from Gary's Mod. Uh, Nintendo Stuff on Steam Workshop. We are working on removing all Nintendo-related stuff from the Steam Workshop. That's crazy. <clears throat> That's insane. Um, well, let's keep reading. Some of you may have noticed that certain Nintendo-related workshop items have recently been taken down. This is not a mistake. The takedown came from Nintendo. Put a pin in that. Honestly, this is fair enough. This is Nintendo's content, and what they allow and don't allow is up to them. They don't want you playing with that stuff in Gary's Mod. That's their decision. We have to respect that and take down as much as we can. This is an ongoing process as we have 20 years of uploads to go through. If you want to help us by deleting your Nintendo-related uploads and never upload them again, that would help us a lot. <clears throat> All right, let's go through this and go through some of the stuff that people have kind of dug up on Twitter, uh, which I know, not a great news source, but there is a lot of true information in these posts. So... Like T9 says right here, I'm 100% sure Nintendo wouldn't do this now, so I'm suspicious it's a false flagger. But the fact they've made this post now is really worrying because this is going to cook a lot of my own add-ons. So true. When I made my very first custom map for TPS and the mod for Combat Arms, I took a map from Gary's mod and converted it to work with Lith Tech Jupiter. That was the uh, Mario Kart 64 block fort map. And it ended up being so much fun to run around with guns and like shoot at your friends and pick up the, you know, dropped items and stuff that would spawn on top of the boxes. It was a very fun map to run around on. And I made it in, a, in such a way that there were like hiding spots um, that you could, there were no lights there. So it was really dark and you could like hide there. At first it was kind of lack of understanding of how the game engine worked, but it ended up actually working out in a fun way. So I never fixed it. But as you can see from Brewster TK over here, false flaggers on Gary's Mod Workshop. If you look up the name Aaron Peters, hold on, I'm going to do this with the recording paused. So this sums it up very well. Lately, there's been chaos in the workshops of Gmod, TF2, SFM, Left 4 Dead 2, etc. Um, on the Steam Workshop. An internet troll by the name of Aaron Peters has been false flagging content creators add-ons with fake DMCAs. This troll has been claiming he's part of Nintendo, which in fact he is not, and has been doing nothing but causing chaos for the past few months, probably at the start of January. So... I've even seen this pop up a little bit before making this video of some people talking about this, and I was kind of hoping it would just die down and the guy would get bored. <laughs> but as somebody who used to be an avid exploiter of video games, I started to realize that if you have a goal, we really don't stop. And it seems like this guy's goal has not been reached yet. He has managed to target add-ons that are Nintendo or Nintendo related in some cases, and he's managing to get rid of any add-ons that even have a smudge of the Nintendo character, even in a piece of art. So Nintendo's not even the one flagging this stuff, which it I'm kind of amazed Nintendo's never gone after like Gmod and stuff like that, but at the same time, I guess even they know their boundaries, <laughs> which is funny to say. But, I don't know, it's, this sucks. Uh, I don't know if his goal is to get rid of Gmod video creators or just ruin everybody's fun in creating content. He has managed to ruin everybody's day and I can't blame them. 
awareness must be spread about this. People must know about this because for all we know, he could even target add-ons that aren't even Nintendo related. He might just have a vendetta against Gmod and Source Game Engine for some reason. Who knows? It sounds like nobody even knows who this guy is. So could be somebody that was attached to the Source Game Engine, got screwed over in some way, and that's that. I mean, that happens with companies from time to time. Um, let's read the final paragraph here. Uh, and for what it's worth, Steam... I hope you do see this post and understand the situation, and if you don't believe me, believe the many people out here on Twitter discussing discussion boards on Steam or even on YouTube. This false flagging has to stop. So you know what this sounds a lot like is the copyright strike era of YouTube that got my first channel shut down in like 2015, 2016, 2017. I was putting up Pokemon Go videos, and I was exposing bot creators that were just using Discord, or not Discord, um, free GitHub bots like Necrobot and stuff like that. And just all they were doing was adding a serial code protection system. And then you'd have to buy a serial code, you know, a, a key for it to unlock all the features of the bot. They weren't really doing anything themselves. They were just stealing code. And that's what got my entire account taken down was false copyright claims from a company that didn't even have any attachment to the bots I was reviewing. So <clears throat> this guy, this is scary because now Steam is having to deal with what YouTube used to have to deal with. And YouTube, I think, came up with a good solution about it. There are false copyright claims once in a while still with YouTube. You'll see it especially in the music space. But... I don't know, this is a dummy, scary situation. I mean, even if you go back over to oops, Twitter, um, Nintendo is no saint, and it has done a lot of shitty things, but just so everyone knows, these DMCAs are likely fake. So the email used, noticed at mm-nintendo.com completely different domain to Nintendo's actual domain, Nintendo.com. mm-nintendo.com simply redirects to Nintendo.com in this attempt to make it seem related to Nintendo's legitimate domain. But such a redirect can be trivially configured by any third-party site. The who is and other DNS information for the two domains are completely different. The fraudulent domain has only been active since 2013 and being held by a completely different registrar with a different domain setting, um, the fraudulent domain's DNS information includes only two records of note, an entry redirecting email to Google's email servers, indicating the perpetrator is likely using Gmail or G Suite together with their fake domain, and the web server redirecting to Nintendo.com. The IP address of the web server is simply a virtual instance in a cloud, a notorious technique of hackers and spammers, and has no relation to any official Nintendo networks. Um, there is no individual identified in the request as making the necess necessary <laughs> declarations. I can't read. Um, <laughs> a DMCA request must be made by an identifiable individual to be valid, and this would coincidentally make it very easy to confirm with Nintendo whether such a request was ever sent when queried directly Nintendo this guy needs to learn how to use periods dark ghost periods sorry if that was a uh, loud to headphone users I didn't mean to pop it like that um, pop lock and drop it I guess when queried directly Nintendo confirmed that any such emails from them are expected to come from the nintendo.com domain Certain errors in both the format of the request and the language used suggest the writer is not a native speaker or is a particularly bad educated one, not even an American, and not legally trained, e neither of which would likely come from Nintendo of America properly. That's a lot to unpack. <clears throat> the DNS records speak volumes, but I also find it very strange that Nintendo hasn't gone after this individual because they're causing damage to Nintendo's name by making everybody think Nintendo is behind this. 
Um, further research easily surfaces instances where this email address has been used to take down fan games on several occasions and has even been spotted targeting Twitter avatars. What in the f- Really? More broadly, DMCA claims against numerous fan projects by Nintendo have been ongoing for years, and while some are undoubtedly genuine, there are enough apparently fraudulent claims occurring for there to be grounds to no doubt just how many of these claims are actually legitimate. This dude, dude. Learn periods. Put them there. Use commas. Use semicolons. I, I, mm. Dude's not even good at writing. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cough, so I gotta pause every once in a while. So, according to OctoSquid over here, which I don't know if they're of anything smart they have notified valve of this the valve dmca teams email is right there uh this sucks i really wish nintendo would do something about this but it sounds like they're not going to we can all hope they do but obviously nintendo is probably not going to do anything here we just gotta hope that these companies kind of fight back. Somebody finally fights back against this false flagger and gets them in trouble and unmasks who Aaron Peters is. And we find out exactly what's going on. But right now, that's pretty much all we know. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.